and welcome back everybody. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's uh, flagship video production. We are live at .conf 2012, that is Splunk's annual user conference. Uh, we're here in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan Hotel, uh, where we've had uh, now a day and a half or so of wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage of uh, all things Splunk and big data. My name is Jeff Kelly uh, with wikibon.org and I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Frick from SiliconANGLE. Thank you, Jeff. Welcome back everyone. We've, we've had a, a, a tremendous day of, of, uh, of guests today really insightful and learning a lot. Hopefully you're learning a lot. Again, the hashtag is data journey. We hope that you'll join us on this journey uh, through Twitter. And, and uh, so now I'm happy to welcome our next guest, Arun Murthy, who is the uh, founder and architect of Hortonworks. Welcome, Arun. Thanks a lot, and a Arun. Cube alum. And also a Cube alum, that's right. We have not had too many uh, Cube alums uh, today. So have you been finding the show? Have you enjoyed yourself? It's been yourself? great. I mean, of course, it's Vegas. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, you know, it's a, a, a known story by itself. But it's, you know, fun to be back on theCUBE. Thanks a lot for having me over. Um, great. You know, so what, what, uh, what, what have you seen? Any, any great surprises uh, in the last couple of days? Any um, things that really stuck, stuck with you? Um, it's, it's really fun to see, you know, how, uh, you know, the, the two user communities, the Hadoop user community and the Splunk user community are beginning to track with each other. Um, that's, you know, I mean, I'm also here to learn. Um, learn from people, you know, in the Splunk community and what we can do better, how we can, you know, work together well. So it's been all good. good. So, yeah, I think we definitely want to understand from you a little bit uh, more about how Splunk, mm -hmm. what Splunk does and what Hortonworks does kind of complement one another. I know there's a little bit of news today as well. Uh, HTTP, the mm -hmm. uh, Hortonworks data platform 1.1 release was today. Tell us a little bit about that. What were some of the, uh, the, the key uh, additions, I should say, to the platform. Yeah, so, I mean, as you guys know, we released uh, the, our flagship 1.0 release uh, of HTTP in, uh, in June during the Hadoop Summit. We've got some extremely awesome feedback from the customers, so this is more of a, you know, I would say an incremental release where we go take, you know, feedback and pour it in. We've done a lot of work in things like uh, availability for both the, you know, the HTFS file system and also the, you know, MapReduce system for the job tracker and so on. So that's been actually really great to actually get feedback. We launched it in uh, June. We've got feedback, you know, as a startup, we, we run hard and we run hard and long. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you don't want to be fast. Fast and hard all on the time. On or off, right? Exactly. It's like the four-year-old, you're either on or off. <laughs> exactly, so you got to be on all the time, man. <laughs> you know, it's been, it's been really good, you know, being in the market and getting all this, you know, great feedback. Uh, we've got, you know, hopefully got uh, more things coming down the pipe in the next couple of months, but, you know, this was actually a way for us to, you know, take this feedback from the market, put it back as a release, and, you know, hopefully, you know, iterate for the faster from now on. So it's been all good. Fantastic. So, you know, a large part of our audience, uh, obviously, uh, is going to be familiar with Hortonworks and Hadoop, but maybe you could kind of lay out a little bit, um, kind of compare side by side what Splunk does, what Hadoop does. Um, you know, there's one of the issues around big data, of course, is there's a lot of different startups and technologies and approaches, and there is some confusion. So maybe if you could help us understand, really, where does uh, Hadoop play and where does Splunk play, and how do they, how do they work together? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Splunk, right? I mean, I've, I've read about the history of the company, how the founders, you know, started you know, looking around and saying, you know, there's a lot of machine dinner data, not just today, but even 10 years ago, and how they've gone ahead and, you know, taken, um, you know, very simple things, but also made them really intuitive for the end user, right? That's, that's a really big deal. I mean, Hadoop has a lot to learn from Splunk in that, in that fashion, right? Um, it's Splunk makes it really f easy for anybody to come in, on board, get data, get reports, all of that stuff. And that's really, you know, very impressive as, as uh, you know, a product person, not, as a not necessarily as a technology person, mm -hmm. right? That's actually, you know, something we can learn a lot from in terms of ease of use, how you onboard customers and so on, right? Now, Hadoop, of course, is, you know, at a, in a kind of a different end of the big data spectrum. I mean, you know, like you guys know, a lot of us have hard work from Yahoo. We've, we've got experience with people trying to, you know, do get, get clean insights out of, you know, multi-terabyte, if not petabyte data sets. Um, so that's kind of an end, you know, other end of the spectrum. Um, as a result, we see a lot of synergies between Splunk and Hadoop. I mean, there's definitely a lot of stuff we can learn from each other. There's also a lot of ways for you to, you know, I'm excited about things like the, the guys, you know, the, the stuff that Splunk guys are working on, things like Hadoop Connect, where they're, you know, bi-directional data movement between Hadoop and Splunk and so on. Um, and that's, you know, that's some of the, you know, interesting aspects. I'm also, like I said, I'm, I'm also here to learn. Um, I'm, you know, attending a lot of talks uh, from things like Hadoop Connect, Hadoop Ops, and so on. I'm really excited about, you know, the fact that the two user communities can, you know, learn a lot from each other. Yeah, that's interesting that you mentioned that. The, the communities actually do kind of remind me of one another because they're both yeah. very uh, excited, very yeah. passionate communities and very involved, um, yeah. much more so than I've seen in other mm -hmm. uh, IT or technology areas. Mm -hmm. um, so 
T talk a little bit about in your community, the Hadoop community, the role a community plays, um, and how Hortonworks is working to really engage that community and, and work with them to kind of bring the best out of them to, to build your product and your services. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, Hortonworks is pretty much all about open source and all the mm -hmm. Apache Hadoop community, right? So we've got a long history. I mean, all of are just you know a twelve-month-old company as as individuals. We have a lot of experience, you know, being in the community for about you know five, six, seven years now, right? And we've learned a lot from our user base. I mean, not just you know, not just the open source community, but also the end users. I mean, right now we've got a bunch of uh, you know customers using Hardenworks. We've got a bunch of people at Yahoo, for example, using Hadoop for a very, very long time. So as a result, we've got uh, you know great feedback from the community, and that's key. I mean, we've got. I mean, that's that's key as. You know, Hadoop is still very young, right? It's it's only four or five years old in in, in in the sense. And as any young product, you've got to, you know, ship fast, you know, kind of unfortunately break things, but also learn fast from it. Um, and having a good and uh, vocal, passionate, engaged user community is a really big part of it because, you know, that helps build the ecosystem and gets us feedback from the, from the users of our software, which makes it, you know, critical for us uh, to, to listen to their voices and help, and that that's, Primarily, the, the the way for us to actually you know improve the improve the project or the product in that sense. So that's been actually great for us. Yeah. But then of course you got to balance kind of their feature functionality requests. I need to solve a problem quickly. I can't do it now right. the way things are set up. Versus kind of more the long term vision and where Absolutely. you, you know, where you want to go. And yeah. And and that's you know one of the things that you know me and every uh, you know the founders uh, the other founders of Hardworks and also you know the rest of the community is is, is really passionate about is. Now you've got the short term, which you know somebody is screaming in your, you know, you've got the customer on the phone trying to tell you things things don't work. But you also got to measure it against, you know, what this means to the, the project, you know, you know, five, six, seven years from now. Right? It's, it's it's kind of all about balancing the long term and the short term. And it's, it's a it's a it's a tough, you know, wire act wire thing to follow. But you got to walk the trapeze wire in some sense, and <laughs> and you know you know do that. And that's what you know. Something we focus a lot on at Hardenworks. It's something we're very proud of, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. Also, you know, you guys are really focusing on kind of getting out into the community, doing training sessions, mm -hmm. helping people learn more about mm -hmm. uh, not just uh, Hortonworks but Hadoop Absolutely. The, the platform. So mm -hmm. tell us. I know you guys have, uh, I think, a road show really where you go around the country. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and what your yeah. goals really are there, and maybe where, where you'll be next. Uh, I'm sure our, some of our audience will be interested in attending. Absolutely. So we've, we've got this road show series going on now, and that's going to hit you know things like DC, um, Chicago, Austin, and so on. Right. I mean, like I said, end of the day, Hadoop. It, it's got a lot of buzz, which is you know really great for a, for a, both as a, you know as an open source community and as, as for us as Hardenworks. But end of the day, you know, you still have so many people who haven't heard of Hadoop, right? Who haven't, even if they've heard of it, they've not used it. I mean, it's it's hard in, in some sense. It's it's kind of still hard compared to you know your existing enterprise software, right? So it's going to take us a lot of time and education to get there. Also, one of the you know problems you have with a disruptive technology like Hadoop is that you've got to actually build up a, a community of people who can understand the technology and you know, effectively use the technology. And that takes you know, years, not months, right? I mean, you know, you know, it took a lot, lot of time for people to understand SQL and databases and so on. I mean, you know, if you can, I'm talking from a 1970s perspective, right? So Hadoop's going to take a long time. And you, first of all, you need to have you know, qualified people. They're you know, in really short supply. Um, if you're an expert at uh, you know Hadoop at this point, you're probably working for one of the vendors. Uh, you know we're still hiring, <laughs> um, but on that there's a lot of people who really really need need uh, you know uh, qualified talent, right? And that's very very premium in the market today. So for us to be able to take Hadoop much beyond its current you know Web 2.0 kind of companies, you know, and the Bay Area and so on, it's going to take a lot of education, a lot of training, which is what we're focused on in terms of spreading the message. It's not just about hard work, but it's about you know the whole right. Hadoop ecosystem. Is so, how, is, are you are you finding some ways to accelerate that process, to, especially on the training, and to get to get more resources out there? Yeah, I mean, we're also partnering with a lot of people, right? If, you know, hard work is partnering with you know really you know, important companies like Microsoft and Teradata, um, and as a result, it'll help us you know spread the message of Hadoop faster through all all our partners, right? And you know, end of the day, it's kind of like you got to walk before you run. Um, so as a result. We are still in the early stages of you know crawling and walking, and it's going to take time, yeah. um, as with any new technology. But we're confident we'll get there, given that Hadoop is such a, you know, turning out to be such a key component of the whole big data strategy for the entire industry. Yeah, so we're yeah. confident. 
So one of the themes we're seeing here at the Splunk show is that uh, you know a lot of their customers are starting with one use case and then <laughs> moving on to, to further use cases that maybe they hadn't anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that Splunk does to kind of accelerate that is make their product available for free to download. Mm -hmm. um, Hortonworks does something similar, a uh, different model in that it's yep. the whole platform is free mm -hmm. uh, to download. Anyone can go to uh, Hortonworks website and download it and start playing with it. Right. But I wonder, have you seen a similar uh, a similar uh, type of pattern where customers maybe download uh, the, the platform to do one thing and then Absolutely. realize now we can really expand to other areas? Absolutely, and it also comes on to the whole education and training aspect, right? So what happens is typically you have one use case in mind, and you know with Hadoop you've got things like advertising. And, um, analytics and so on, right? So people have this one use case in mind. They download Hadoop. It's typically, you know, not. It, it, it's interesting. What we're seeing with Hadoop is both it's both top up and bottom down, right? So bottom up, what's happening is that, you know, you've got a couple of engineers in your company, right? They they have, you know, they're passionate about technology, so they go get hard work, you know, HTTP, hard work, their platform. They install it, run an app, and then they go to their management and say, you know, this is what the value of Hadoop is. This is how we're getting. You know, returns from our investment in Hadoop, right? And over time, what you see is you'll see not just these two engineers here, but you'll also see like two engineers in another organization, another organization in, within the same enterprise. You'll see, you know, five, six, seven different teams try to do this. And at some point, it kind of bubbles all the way and say, then people have people realize that you know you've got to have an enterprise level strategy, where right? you can't have every single you know organization doing it for their own. Right. And you know, then you come to this point where you, know, you, you probably talk to Hartmut at that point, you, know, you have a shared Hadoop cluster because that's how you kind of exploit your economies of scale and, you know, and also your people investments, right? You don't want 10 people you know, you know, kind of managing small, 10 small Hadoop clusters. Right? You, want, you, know, you want your central IT organization adopt Hadoop and manage it. Um, that's, so exactly what you saw with Splunk is what you're seeing in Hadoop. It's a lot of, you know, you know, it's kind of going bottom up and also top down. Now, people are also at the CXO levels. They're, they're realizing that you know Hadoop is a is a key driver of value, and as a result, you know they have to look down and say, okay, how are we currently use Hadoop? And as you get this top up and bottom down thing kind of going, at some point they meet, and that's you know kind of the sweet spot for Hadoop. And we see that over and over again, not just you know at the web product companies, at insurance firms, at you know banks, all these places. They're seeing that you know pretty much the same story repeat over and over again. Right. But the whole hype of about Hadoop also helps, right? It, it means that people are a lot more people know about Hadoop than you know even two years ago, right? right. When I started working on Hadoop six years ago, I didn't know about Hadoop. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's definitely it's you know it's definitely getting better and better. So this attention and, and, the, and uh, the coverage that you guys give at the Cube and so on is actually great because this means it helps the it helps spread the message of Hadoop faster and helps us um, you know get adoption cycles shorter and shorter. Yeah. Which is good. And again, just to dig down one layer on, on that in, on that initial adoption, because mm -hmm. um, you said it's a pattern you've seen over mm -hmm. and over, which is great, right? That's what you want. So, you know, what are the top two applications that that first guy, more often than not, or maybe not more often than not, but on the on the cases where you've seen it grow in the mm -hmm. enterprise, what what exactly are those projects? Um, things like you know the top. Two would definitely be things like ETL and uh, you know analytics, right? If people are trying to find a needle in a haystack. You know they've got you know their you know their data from existing data marts. They've got data from social, you know um, you know their websites and so on. And trying to find that needle, they're trying to find that one insight which they can use to drive business value. That's something we see over again, not just you know in the web two dollar countries, but also in things like like I said banks. Right. And I mean you, everybody's got a website now, right? You right. go to you know you know any bank, they've got a website. You, they they'll probably also have a mortgage uh, division, right? And trying to find that one view of the customer is, you know, something we see a lot of times. And is it usually a view that they've got in their mind that they're trying to validate or to get the return on that investigation, yeah. or is it I'm just walking down the street and I trip over the, you know, the golden penny? It, it's it's really both, right? I mean, that's why you have this notion of data scientists becoming so popular these days. I mean, the data scientist, you know, in my view, is somebody who can have a hypothesis based on you know, existing data, but then you want to be able to test that hypothesis not just on a subset, but you want to be able to test that hypothesis on your entire enterprise data set. Right? That is, that's kind of the key driver we're seeing. And what Hadoop allows you to do is do that not just on a small subset, but also on the entire data set, and that could be you know, terabytes if not petabytes. Right? So we see that, so you, you, you need to be able, able to have that insight in most places, but then once you have that, it's it's kind of you know training a muscle, training a brain, right? Once you have that, you continue to do better and better and better, right. and that's a, that's kind of the pattern we see over again, over and over again. Right.
Exciting. So we've got uh, only time for one more question. So mm -hmm. I'd love to get an update. What do you guys have on the horizon? Um, you know, we've got actually 2012 is coming to a close yeah, pretty no, quickly here. <laughs> it seems like it was just exactly yesterday. Yeah, we yeah. were just kind of starting the year. We were writing our predictions for 2012, and yeah. now here we are, almost uh, to 2013. Yeah. But yeah. what's on the horizon for you guys, both in the short term and, and a little longer term into next year? Um, you know. Our primary thing is also, you know, we're also, as much as we are a product company, we're also a technology company. And without a technology, you can't drive the product and vice versa, right? So we've, we spend a lot of time and effort on, um, you know, things like Hadoop 2, right? Hadoop 2 is on the horizon now. It's, it's, it was in alpha for a while. It's, it's close to a point where, you know, it, it's, we've, we've, we're seeing, you know, customers, uh, you know, one that we can share off is, you know, we, we probably will have a two, two and a half thousand node install of Hadoop 2 in the next uh, few weeks. That's a really exciting time, right? And that means that you know my cell is going to be ringing fairly often, which is <laughs> which is not. Which so is good. good news, bad news. It's right? good news and bad news. Right? It's good news that you actually. I'd rather be you know yelled at than ignored. <laughs> right. Better, right? better <laughs> than the uh, the alternative, the exactly. quiet cell phone. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I'd rather be yelled at than ignored, right? Um, so as a result, that's exciting. From as a technologist, that's really fun. I mean, I remember the stage when we did this when, in Hadoop One Dollar when it became right, this was in the similar phase about three years ago, right? It was insane. The, the, the last two or three months were completely crazy. Um, so we're kind of getting up to that. Um, and you know, as you guys know, we're, we're working a lot on yarn. You guys have covered it on uh, Silicon Angle. Yarn is going to be, you know, at, at a really large install base in the next uh, weeks, few weeks actually. And that's really exciting. And for, for people who might not understand, yarn is kind of the next generation of MapReduce. Absolutely. And bringing a kind of new ways of processing data. Yeah. So far, you know, Hadoop's just been about. Um, HDFS for storage, which is raw bytes, the file system, and MapReduce for processing. With Yarn, what we're doing is we're taking Hadoop much beyond MapReduce. MapReduce is you know, essentially one algorithm, right? There's you know, tens, if not hundreds of algorithms you want to run your data set. So with Yarn, we'll allow you to do not just MapReduce, but you know, MPI and graph processing and you know, bulk synchronous processing and so on, which are really, really interesting from a lot of customer perspective. And you know, a lot of it is you know, use case driven. And with this, we'll be able to take Hadoop into significantly more use cases and help people solve more of these on Hadoop with all the data that you have in HDFS. So that's really exciting. So with Yarn getting into you know, this, you know, outside this beta stage, it's actually you know, one of the most exciting things I've seen personally for, for a while in Hadoop. That's great. Well, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. We'd love to have the Cube alum to come by. We look thanks. forward to seeing you on the next time. Yeah. So, again, we've got uh, more guests lined up. Thanks to Rune Murthy, the founder and architect of Hortonworks, for stopping by. Uh, we've got another guest queued up, but getting all mic'd up, so we'll be back in just a minute.